Yay, Docs Talkers. Because these people are fucking weird. They are the people that will go out of their way to dox random people. Now, who am I talking about? I'm talking about Lil Savannah, aka our exorcist. Someone who has a history of just doxing people. Yes, you're able to say, oh, hey, um, yeah, they'll just grab people's info from medical shit. By the way, that is illegal. You violated HIPAA. So, yeah. So, again, a lot of this shit is always weird. Yeah, no. I don't I don't like the fact that this woman goes out of her way to fucking dox random people. She will dig into just people's random home lives, but she mainly does it on TikTok where she will go out of her way to fucking dox these people. Look at that. Look at that. This is someone that has just been doing this shit for a while. She's, they hide it under accountability or they hide it under, do you need someone identified? And one of the people that I find really funny, I find it really funny how he does this. Dinesh, that Dinesh guy who will dox anyone and everyone, no matter fucking what. It's always this guy. He pops up, he does his little song and dance, and then it's just, hmm, interesting. But we go over, and he does this shit on YouTube, which is a violation of YouTube's terms of service. He will re-upload his TikToks where he is just doxing people. He goes through their social media, but again, he tries to claim that the information provided on this page is to help victims, blah, 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 blah. He wants to claim that this is not doxing. I do not support doxing, what doxing is. So I'm a guy with a degree in cybersecurity. I know what doxing is. What Dinesh does not have is a fucking leg to stand on because what he is doing is doxing. Because... He wants to make the claims where it's like, oh, we're not doing anything, but this guy will go after people. Like, for example, here. Yeah, going after people's jobs is actually malicious intent, by the way, because... If you're going to pop up and do this type of shit, let's not. Now, I'm not defending the actions of the people that he goes after, because I don't care. I don't care that bad people get fucked up, but a lot of the times, he gets shit wrong. He gets this shit wrong, too. He will go out of their way to fucking just dox random people. And this is some of the most fucked shit I've seen. He's done this for years, years, and he hides it under, oh, I do you need someone identified? So yeah, he will upload these little videos where it's just like this. On Dr. Robotnik here, Officer Spencer Badger. Just to catch you up with the story, it is from last November where I reported this officer for being on an anonymous account posting racist, homophobic and misogynistic things while hiding his identity. Oh my God, dude. There's a thing called actually abusing what you're doing. Oh my God, someone's racist online. Yeah, that's bad. You want to know something that's worse? Going after their job for it. But again, it's always interesting. All I did was merely uncover who was behind the account. And when we found out it was a police officer, it was deeply concerning. Now, like all people incapable of taking accountability, he blames me and says that 
I professionally doxed him, or whatever. Which is another reason he shouldn't be a police officer, because he doesn't know what doxing is. Turns out, there were very real consequences. <sighs> the fact that you do this, you do this to everyone. You can do it to a cop, blah, blah, blah. Cops are public servants. You can make these uh, little arguments. Rob Etsy, blah, blah, blah. He makes these Lola edits where he will dox people. Let's see here. Yeah, he does this shit all the fucking time. He posts the guy's fucking home address. This type of shit is so fucking annoying. He does the fucking street view all of this like this is the same shit that everyone is not okay with no one's okay with this shit he'll uh edit himself into having these little moments of like oh i'm a powerful man yeah you're In able to dox people that's something that happens but the fact is what you're doing is putting more people at risk just Go to the cops directly. If there is a crime being committed, go to the cops. Just go to the fucking cops. But this is so fucking annoying because it's not the only time. And they have these weird fucking little link tree things where they're like, oh, who is this? Who is that? What is this? Hurt der der. Wah, wah, wah. Same with our exorcist, Lola Savannah. She'll post this shit on Facebook, fucking on Instagram, all of that shit. They do this shit trying to feel like they're better than everyone. And it's always, always fucking weird. Like this is really fucking nuts. This chick goes out of her way to dox people, and it's always fucking weird. This chick, however, is one of the people that is interesting. That Dinesh guy. I want to really, really pull up something. So, let's uh, kind of, yeah. Let's, let's bring this up. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, do I have a very special feud junkie for you. Uh, Dinesh and Savannah Sparks are in real hot water. Well, at least Savannah Sparks is. I flipped a guy named EMT Cody a while ago. Now, EMT Cody was trolling me on my YouTube channel. And I think he'd seen enough of my videos to sort of realize that, yeah, maybe uh, he got this one wrong about Savannah and Dinesh. Now, EMT Cody was pretty high up in Daneland. He was high up enough that Savannah Sparks actually was on one of his TikTok lives. Now, he started feeding me information a while ago about the group, and he mistakenly commented on a post that I made in celebration of Savannah losing her Twitter account. This is that post. Yeah, so this is shit that just continuously goes on. And these people have gotten into multiple controversies over this shit, by the way. Now, Savannah Sparks directly text messaged Cody with some threats. Here's the text messages. So you can see Savannah has sent... Mm. Your house, she hasn't taken it to that level with me. So far, it's my, been my employers and my state license board. And then it's just, I feel sorry for your wife taking a page out of the incel playbook. Good luck to you. Cody, a screenshot of my post and Cody is in there saying, took them long enough. Now she writes, laughing emoji, I feel sorry for your wife taking a page out of the incel playbook. Good luck to you. Now, if you look at the top of the page, you can see Cody had sent her a message. You can see part of it. It says your house. She hasn't taken it to that level with me. So far, it's been my employers and my state license board. Now, he's talking about somebody that I work directly with who is very good at reporting medical professionals to the licensing board. Now, in the next series of... Now, it's completely sad. When I've done nothing to it, I'll be reaching out to Taylor, also letting her know someone I helped is now helping white supremacists deplatform me. Have a good one. 
other than blame me for fake accounts that I had nothing to do with and then delete me from social media. This is one of those things that's fucking weird. These people always make the argument of white supremacists. And before they try and do that shit to me, yeah, no, I hate white supremacists. I'd rather see them dead. So, yeah. Screenshot. Savannah has sent his blow that to tap for me. Have a good one. Nothing shot currently that Savannah has sent. Hi, Taylor. Your partner is currently celebrating my Twitter account being taken down by white supremacists and convicted abusers. All because I asked him to not engage with someone who has attacked my family. I'm not sure why he's taken this position, but considering these people got me swatted last year, I would you urge you to urge him to stop. Thank you. He also has my cell phone number. If they gain access to them, I'll know it's because of him and we'll have to take legal action. I'm sorry to be reaching out like this, but he's aligning with some dangerous people who legitimately want him hurt, want me hurt. Bro, I'm going to be honest. If you were, if I were to get like a little um, message from someone I'm with saying, hey, yeah, someone just DM'd me about some fucking retarded shit. I'd be like, hey, can you send me that? Because I'm going to take it to the police. Cody's but. wife, Taylor, DM by getting the urgency to that honest text messages. I wasn't going to release them because I like to protect my sources, but the cat was already out of the bag and Cody decided to make a TikTok video, which has now been deleted. He's deleted his entire account because Dinesh has gone after him as well in support of Savannah Sparks. Here's that video. Hey, EMT Cody. Hey, what's going on? I saw your friends only where you trashed me the whole time. So, so honestly, tell me, why would we want to associate with someone, right, who associates with people who would harm us? Now, these people go out of their way to fucking just do this crazy fucking shit. He wants to be as disingenuous and fucking lie he fucking lies directly and it's insane seeing it what why is that why is that confusing to you did you want me to show people who you're associating with why we want nothing to do with you okay you're getting your feelings hurt because we don't want you to have access to us while you're in a comment section celebrating with brian fucking carlson a guy who's legitimately sent me a death threat and Brian Carlson's girlfriend, who uses the N-word and the homophobic F-slur just freely. That's who you aligned with. Did you want people to know that? No? Because they're probably going to react the same way I did. I'm actually not done with you, EMT Cody. See, what's really fucked up about the whole thing is that you reached out to Savannah back in February. So, again, we we like to make sure that this shit is fucking so dishonest that's what Dinesh does Dinesh is a guy that doxes everyone he's a doxer he's a psycho dude he's a fucking psychotic like what the fuck he's a psychotic you reached out to her you asked for her help and she was there for you and even mentioned this is why my platform is so important and you were so, so invested. Savannah sent your wife a text that said she doesn't want you to have any more access to her. Why is that surprising to you? Why are you contacting someone's wife? Like, I'd immediately be like, hey, why are you contacting people in my area? The same way that you made a fucking complaint because someone called your mom. Someone called your mom, Dinesh. Like, what the fuck is up with you? Why are you such a fucking psycho? You're complaining about people stalking your kids, stalking you, harassing you, and then you pop up and you're like, oh, I might as well do the same. You're fucking hypocrites. She donated her time to help you and your wife. So, of course, she would be hurt when you're celebrating her Twitter going down. It's a fucking Twitter boo-hoo make a new one because she fucking did by the way she made a new one or she fucking went out of her way to mass appeal this shit 
because she's fucking insane, dude. Like, she goes out of her way to do this shit. With Brian fucking Carlson. That's why she would contact your wife and say, make sure he loses my number. Brian Carlson literally has a warrant out for him for his arrest for how he has harassed Savannah online. But, but go ahead. Go on with how we're the problem, right? I, listen, I'm not putting up with bullshit anymore. People can talk all the shit they want about me. Do you go out of your way to post the fucking warrant number. You post the... Yes, the court documents are public record. Yes, you're able to make that argument. But you are still putting that Cody guy's little uh, family at risk. Because you have this audience that goes out of their way to harass people. You're fucking insane, dude. Do not be surprised when I respond. I have every right to. As gangster as he tried to act at the end of that, he commented on my post and didn't even shout me out. Look, I don't blame you, Dinesh. I have to edit my videos and I fucking scare myself. Now, there are a number of comments on Cody's video. Here are some of them. Sammy H says, So Savannah helps your wife. Personal info. You agree with Ethtech, blah, blah, blah. Claims you want to be this. And we just continuously go on. Savannah threw me under the bus several months. Could have sworn I said that. Literally have a restraining order against her. Let's see. Wanting to protect your family is an ego now. Like, everyone goes out of their way to point out this very clear fact. Dinesh, our exorcist, all of them are insane. Idiot. I've been watching her for some time because I was going to go in on her, but I just realized she's just a dummy. And there's really no point attacking stupid people like that. But there are a lot of content creators on TikTok who are aligned with Savannah and Dinesh because they are afraid of them. Here's some screenshots. Yeah, Cass, Cabby, Jess, Princess Fancy Feet are all besties. They are smart ladies. They know what Sav is capable of. She could dismantle all of their platforms in seconds by saying they were siding with you and against her. No one is safe from her. Now, I've spoken to many content creators from TikTok, pretty large ones as well, that are aligned with that group who feed me information as well. And they're all very afraid of them. They dominate that platform out of fear because people are scared of losing their platforms. They've seen what Dinesh and Savannah do to people. They've seen them dox people get people fired from their jobs, all because they disagree with them. Uh, it is abuse. It's online abuse. There's no other way of really describing it. They are abusing people on that app, and there are large content creators on that app who are siding with them purely out of fear. Now, unfortunately for a lot of those people who are siding with Dinesh and Savannah, when they do go down, and it is just a matter of when, there's going to be a lot of people coming after you. Now, there are a lot of names that I have, uh, and I've got a lot of information on a lot of these people that surround them. It's just not going to stop with taking down the two main bullies on that app. It is going to kick on for quite some time until... He's not wrong. Like, this type of shit goes on forever. This type of shit will be... is absolutely fucking gross. Like, this type of shit bothers me. It fucking bothers me so fucking much everybody who was involved in daneland whether they were supporters or whether they were content creators until you're all taken down that's pretty much what's going to happen uh online bullying and shaming people publicly shaming people is disgusting and the way you all go about it is yes it's it's left the realm of just you know doing clapback videos and calling somebody out you're contacting their employers you're harassing their family and friends. You're even weaponizing CPS, Child Protective Services, on people that you disagree with. Now, what happens when Child Protective Services go around to these people's houses is if the child's old enough, they interview that child on their own in a separate room. It's very traumatizing for the family and everybody involved. This is what Dinesh and Savannah and their supporters are doing to people. Now, I do... Yeah, this is, this is a bunch of fucking psychotic shit that pisses me off. These people get away with this shit nonstop. Now, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of people like Dinesh or fucking Savannah. Because I've dealt with actual evil people. I've dealt with the fucking psychotic people that pull up. 
I'm not afraid of them. I'm really fucking not. I've spoken to victims of Dinesh. I've spoken to victims of fucking Savannah. I've spoken to them. And they're afraid because they'll send people. They send people to their victims' houses. Really? You go out of your fucking way to do this shit? Really? Intimidation tactics? All over online shit, too. Do have some good news on the back end of all of this. Savannah Sparks has committed a HIPAA violation by sharing Cody Sharp's information with that Dinesh guy. Thanks, Dinesh, for making that video, by the way, because, uh, yeah, you exposed that for us. You're a little gem, you are. And I think the funny thing about all of this is no one was really after Savannah. I was the one that sort of threw her into the mix. The people behind all of this, they don't give a shit about Savannah Sparks. And I'm like, well, Dinesh and Savannah, they're like peas and carrots. They go together. We really should be trying to take her platform down as well and getting her held accountable for the crimes she's committed on that app. So it was really thanks to me that Savannah's been thrown into the mix. So I think had you dipped a lot earlier, Sav, um, and I know you do watch and I do thank you for your support you probably wouldn't be in this position. Now, I do have a lot of connections, like you know. So I've helped MT Cody lodge that complaint, that HIPAA violation that you committed when you handed over MT Cody's information to Dinesh because you didn't do that out of charity. He paid you and here's the screenshots of that. So on the off chance. Bro, 35 bucks, dude. Holy shit. That's actually insane. People were wondering, I'm actually from the true crime community and there are quite a few of us here watching this all unfold, so. Consultation. Dude, the fact that, oh my God. If anyone wants to speak to me off the record or if they want to keep it confidential, just hit me up on Instagram. So essentially, EMT Cody, Cody Sharp, uh, he's a client of yours. After Savannah got that blue check mark, I've got to be honest, I was feeling a little bit blue, but um, this has just made my fucking day. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> like, this type of shit is insane, dude. Fucking. <sighs> Goddamn fucking. TikTok people. These people are insane. TikToker sued in for everything. Video, TN Constitutional, that's Andrew on TikTok, breaks down the financial aspect to this case. Now, this could see Dinesh being bankrupt by the end of this. Now, what a lot of these. This is all insane to me. Is they act like true crime web sleuths along with their supporters. They will dig into the background of random strangers online. They'll dig up their. Exactly. Look at this. Look at this. This is something and i'm so happy fucked around and found out targeted a wealthy couple in florida he's paying the price small number of tiktokers blah 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 he he wants i hate this i hate tiktok's whole genre of we check for accountability we make sure you take accountability and it's always insane their past if they've been divorced if they've got custody battles if they've ever been convicted of a crime and sometimes it's just drink driving or some shit like that or some sort of driving offense which they all have by the way when we dug into their background they're having goes at people for basically doing the same shit that they done in the past now the problem with them acting like true crime web sleuths true crime web sleuths look into the background of serial killers or people who have committed a horrendous murder purely to understand the criminal mind that's what it's for. And these people are deploying the same tactics on random strangers on the fucking internet. Now, one of the worst things that these people do is they inundate child protective services with bogus allegations against their victims. Hundreds of people will call and email child protective services in an attempt to strong arm them into going around to some person's house that they don't fucking like. What that does in turn puts vulnerable children who may be in harm's way on, on the fucking back burner. You're wasting their time. Yeah, these, I've seen people do this. It's like Maya Moore, Ruby Violet. Yeah, Steve Deleve. These people also file false CPS reports. And fucking Dinesh, Savannah, all these docs talker freaks, all of them. They are fucking psychotic freaks, dude. They are insane. And again, I personally 
do not agree with racism, bigotry of any kind. I'm a Latino pansexual man. I And I'm disabled. I'm a triple minority. Why would I ever support someone being a fucking discriminatory bigot? But the fact that Dinesh, Dinesh, Savannah, they go out of their ways to fucking harass people. They dox people. They do all of this stupid shit. And then they're like, oh my god, this is a okay. Oh my god, wah, 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 wah. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? This type of shit is so fucking gross. They do it on Instagram. They do it on Twitter. They do it on TikTok. They do it on fucking Facebook. Think about it. These people fucking try. They try and do this shit. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Suspended from law, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no. You try and grab this shit. Yeah, no. Do, 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 do. No. You fucking do this psychotic shit. Dude, what the fuck? You pop up. You post this shit. You act like you're a fucking true crime person. You're not. You're a fucking dumbass on, on TikTok. Oh, and Dinesh. Dinesh is my favorite little creature. Dinesh ruins the fucking image of people who are Indian or fucking East Asian. Like, they fucking ruin the image of people. Because he goes out of their way to fucking harass, dox all of these people. He'll do it on TikTok. No one gives a shit. But as soon as you put it on YouTube, dumbass... You forget this is against TOS, but we continue. Purely because you don't like somebody. Now, if that doesn't make you a sick freak, I don't know what is. Enjoy the video. Because not only did he attack people he didn't agree with, he attacked people in his own circle that started speaking out against him. Not only was he attacking people politically opposite of him, he was attacking people politically sided with him that started saying, hey, wait a minute, you're doing too much or opposing what he was doing. He didn't like to set his little circle of friends. It's an ego thing. I read in the complaint that when they started up on the current plaintiff, Jennifer, they alleged that they have information to find out that Dinesh was paid up to upwards of $5,000 total directly to him to track her down and to do all this. In these civil lawsuits, if they get a judgment against Dinesh, all the money that he occurred during this time frame while he's doing this to the plaintiffs, they can pull that money and make him pay that money to them for damages. On the complaint, there's four different counts. Federal courts require a minimum of at least $75,000 for damages and stuff. However, in the complaint, they said the exact amount will be determined at trial through a jury. Now, the $75,000 is excluded interest, statutory damages, punitive damages, or any other losses done through the, uh, the doctor's business. So you're... Look at that. You go out of your way to harass these people. You harass people that have that fuck you money. And it is insanity that you get away with this shit, dude. You're looking about four charges, so 75,000, like 300 grand right there, just right off the top. That's a lot of money to think about for a private citizen. Is it going to be more than that? Possibly. Could it be right at $75,000? We don't know until whatever they agree out of court to do or whatever a jury decides, whichever way this goes, whether they settle or goes to a jury trial. The wheels of justice turn slowly here in the United States. And as far as any other country, I'm pretty sure it's the same way. So as you can see there, folks, Dinesh could be looking at a large sum of money that he's going to have to pay out now. Dinesh knows how much money he has made off doing this don't you Dinesh and I know you watch my channel and I thank you for the support um wow that's all I'm gonna say you've been crying poor this entire fucking time now I do have reason to believe that they're not interesting in settling they want to take this to a jury trial and all this is gonna come out so anybody who donated to Dinesh isn't your face gonna be red this is the problem when you become like a cult leader and you basically believe your own bullshit. Dinesh has done some very, very nasty things in the background that is all going to come out during discovery. When I say Dinesh is done, Dinesh is done. And anyone connected to him who has been doing the same thing, you are too. 
This ain't gonna stop. We've spent a lot of time finding out who the trolls are in the background, making contact with the victims on TikTok, finding out the backstories to the smear campaigns these accountability checkers are running on people. We've spent a lot of time gathering that evidence for this moment. Now there has been a lot of doubters in my comment section, particularly when I made that video a year ago, saying accountability has come. The day of reckoning is here for Dinesh and Savannah Sparks. <laughs> this is so stupid. It's been too ever happened. Now it's probably time that I reveal my true nature. I don't give a fuck about your POC status, what gender you claim to be, what political party you claim to be affiliated. Now, I'm not associated with this guy. Yeah, I can sub. Yeah, I can enjoy his content, but it's an still. An asshole is an asshole. And you lot are fucking assholes. These people think that this shit's like law and order, where someone gets arrested, they go to trial, they get convicted and sentenced within the fucking hour that the show's on. These people don't realize how long legal cases go for. And I do suspect this is going to go for a while. But I personally believe that Dinesh is going to be off social media a lot sooner than that. These social media platforms are going to have to start protecting themselves from their own users well, who are going to carry on in this manner. Who are going to... I don't know. For views like... So... Feud Junkie, he tries to do all this random shit where it's like, oh, hey, this is kind of... Which one did I just watch? In just today's video financially ruined. Okay. So... Now we see here precedent and everything of that sort where it's just weird. I do want to say this. I actually did speak to Tizzy Ent in the past and it's, um, it's not okay. Like this type of shit is not okay, but let's kind of, uh, do this. Doxing is hit mainstream media. For those of you who don't know what doxing is, this is what it is. The action or process of searching for and publishing private or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet, typically with malicious intent. Now the TikTokers- Yep. As I cover in my videos, do just that. I have proven without a shadow of a doubt the malicious intent. For those of you who missed it, here it is again. We can find where you stay, but we can find where you work. I bet we can find out everything we need to know about you. Oh, I am seriously overworking myself. I got three hours of sleep last night. That's not important. Here, this is the guy you're looking for. And here's his Facebook. All right, I'm going to go take a nap. If he's not destroyed by the time I wake up, I'll take care of it. The old guy in the beard is a content creator by the name of Tizzy Ant. His real name is Michael McWater. He's actually been on the Young Turks recently over the Sarah Comrie fucking thing. It was a mess. The other guy is a content creator by the name of Dinesh Nashervan. That Dinesh guy on TikTok. He likes to weaponize his POC status. He hasn't been doing it a lot lately because, Yay. well, it's not working anymore. So now he's just weaponizing his children and saying that their lives are in danger because people are exposing him for making money off slandering others online. Yeah, he's going to court and he's getting his ass sued. And he continues to grift off people. His fucking supporters are stupid. The legal action... You're not wrong. Like, these people are fucked up in the head. Like, holy shit. At you junkie helps expose Anash, Savannah, and others. God. This is always interesting to me. Coming towards Dinesh, I did break down in a series of TikTok videos. I'll link it in the description. It's a playlist. They're only short. Watch it if you want. Now, here's the kicker. Doxing has been covered by mainstream media over the last few months. Here's the breakdown. CNN covered doxing, and this is basically what they said. They spoke to Lauren Crump, whatever the fuck that is, from the Technology Policy and Advocacy Council for the Anti-Defamation League in the United States. And this is what she said. I think in certain circumstances, it is probably appropriate that doxers have some level of criminal liability or civil liability. In all my videos, I cover the people that really should be held legally accountable for running smear campaigns on people and putting them... True. 
Like um, all like, this we shit know this is, is happening. so Dinesh, fucking insane Aaron to me. Dinesh, and, and our exorcist both know exactly what happens to their victims when they run these smear campaigns. She goes on to say that state laws vary greatly and there is no federal statute outlawing doxing, meaning there isn't currently one specific standard codified. Now, I have predicted that they will change the laws in the United States. This is why I'm covering this. CNN so, here's the biggest thing here. Now, I'm not going to continue watching this, mainly just so I can make my points. Dinesh, Savannah, Tiziant, yeah, a lot of the times they do this shit, and sometimes they get good results. I'm not going to lie and say, oh my god, that never happens. You want to know something? These people go out of their way to harm everyone that is just not agreeing with them doesn't matter politically politically that shit will never matter because at the end of the day these people are going to weaponize whatever they can to cause harm to you they don't care about what the truth is they're just like you know what fuck it kill them and these people are awful they're fucking terrible people absolute degenerate bastards 